Hello everybody, welcome to Gen Con 2020. We're already at Gen Con 2020. Welcome to the Atomic Mass Transmissions version or part of Gen Con 2020. This is the class called Making Your Paints Pop or Making Your Colors Pop, however you want to say it. The idea of this class is to uh, get into um, how to make those colors on your miniatures just pop right out. Um, give it a lot of zazz, a little pizzazz. I left the light on instead of bringing it over, more dramatic. So what we got here is we got Thanos and we're going to do a couple different colors on him. And I'm going to explain like how to use inks. I get a lot of questions on how to use inks, uh, what inks are for, um, and how to um, utilize them and incorporate them into your normal painting. They can be very easy and uh, bring a lot to uh, brought, bring a lot of life to your miniature. So I got a couple different miniatures here and we're going to uh, play around with some colors. And I want to show you how I'm going to make a bright poppy blue on my Thanos and how to make it even more poppy by using certain colors around it. And then we're going to do the same colors on uh, another miniature blue, but I'm going to make the blue make another color pop out. So let's, let's just go ahead and switch it over to the Thanos cam, not to be confused with the copter. And we're just going to start working on a couple of things. I'm going to get some blue out here. I'm using the scale 75 range. And I'm going to pick a couple of colors here. Uh oh, I don't have, I don't have my hobby knife. So I'll use this color. So I'm going to use some uh, amaranth blue, which is a pretty bright blue. But we want to, we're going to bring a lot of color into this. I want to bring a lot of pop, a lot of excitement into the miniature. So I'm just going to thin this down. I've Zenithal primed my Thanos. I'm going to try to utilize that to um, show off and show me where the volume of the miniature is. So let's just throw some blue on there. Very thin coat so I can still see the volume. I'm not going to paint the whole miniature today. Just like this. That's already a pretty bright poppy blue, but I want to I want to make it very intense. I like very intense colors, and um, I get asked a lot how to do that. So that's what this is about. This is about doing that. I really want to focus on the chest. Super cool sculpt. So. I want to show it off. So I want to shadow stuff. And a lot of new painters, um, you know, a very quick way to shadow, of course, people say add black, but that's what this class is about, is how to add more color than just black. If you add black, black desaturates. So it removes that pop, it removes that, um, you know, intensity. So my goal here is to not lose the intensity. As you can see, I left the, the gauntlet off for ease of painting. I'll add it later. I'll leave his hand like that. We'll paint that purple like his, like his face. Make it skin colored. So I'm gonna let that dry and we're gonna go ahead and add gold. Now I'm gonna put a little spot of gold over here on this gauntlet so you can see what's gonna happen here. So like let's say this is my gold. That gold looks pretty good. This is the um, dwarven gold from scale 75. I really like this. Uh, I really like this gold, but for me, what I really like is I'm going to take some ink tense chestnut. And I'm going to add this to my gold. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to add some brown, and the chestnut actually has a little bit of red in there too. So it's going to make the uh, just going to make the gold a little more intense and add richness. 
It's going to make the, the colors a little more depth, a little depth of color is always good. So it's just a couple drops in some of this. Mix it all up. I'm going to put this next to it so you can see it. And we're going to use utilize this across the whole, all the armor. So just a couple drops of ink. And you can see there's more rich, intense color in there, right? You know, the dwarven gold's a good color on its own, but by adding a little ink, you can just get that depth that you really want. So let's just put this over the miniature. This doesn't have to be perfectly coated because the way I'm going to shade this is going to cover and bring in those shadows. Yeah, see how, see how lively that gold is now? A little blue in there, that's fine. A little blue got on my gold, that's fine. Uh, that's great. Just adds a little life to it. So you could do this in like one layer and with that Zenith of Prime, you kind of get that like quick tabletop because the volume, remove the volumes there. Volume is just the uh, depth of shape, like the defining um, of shape in layman's term. Very simple explanation there. I'm not going to get too deep into it. So it works very well for a quick, I'm not going to go all the way down to the legs. I'm going to go cover that. You can just see how much more intense that is. Let's go ahead and do his noggin. Now, I'm not afraid to touch my measure. Like I, once it's dry, of course, I put my fingers all over. Whatever gets me the best result gets the paint on there. Lets me control my brush. So if I need to touch his painted part, I do. It's fine. We're just gonna frame it so it looks nice on the camera. We're not painting the back, in case you're wondering. The blue I used was, um, was Amarath Blue from Scale 75. So you can see that that's already pretty intense, but I'm gonna let this dry and we're gonna to move to another measure and we're gonna use some of the same colors, except for we're gonna reverse them and we're gonna uh, we're gonna really show some color pop. But I need to, this to dry for that next step. So I'm gonna bring over some, bring over our Doctor Strange. And I'm gonna take the same blue, I'm gonna take the same Amrith blue but now I'm going to take a little gray, a little gray blue. So maybe ends mouth in or ends mouth blue from scale. Which I don't have poked open yet. That's a fresh pot of paint. And I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Arbuckle's um, Arbuckle's brown. Arbuckle's brown has a lot of purple in it. So my goal here is to desaturate the blue while still keeping it blue on this monitor, right? And, and this will all come clear here shortly. But like if I desaturate this blue, I'm 
and I, I'm going to keep this pretty intense, but the focus here on this miniature is, of course, the rings, his mystic effects, right? And I really want to bring a lot of attention to those. And I want, I still want a nice blue, but I want to bring attention to the, uh, the glowy rings. So I'm going to desaturate the blue to make the rings pop. Does that make sense? It will. So I'm just going to do it really quick. Desaturate blue. Now I'm going to get some orange. I'll make some Tiamat orange. And I'm going to use a lot of ink here. I'm going to use red and yellow ink. Yes, I have a wet palette and a well palette. I'm using both at the exact same time. Um, the wet palette, of course, is really great for um, your opaque paints. Uh, the well palette is great for these inks. So I'm going to mix a little red and yellow together, of course, to make orange. And then I want to use pure yellow first to get a base layer on those mystic rings. Does the brand, uh, any good ink is good. I like art inks and uh, I like these scale 75s. I think they're good. But you're just looking for intense colors. You're looking for bright, powerful colors. And one thing that helps with that, getting that pop, is this white undercoat, right? So I, um, I used an airbrush and I zenithal primed my Doctor Strange. But then I did a really quick focus of pure white airbrush on the Mystic Rings. You can do that with a brush. It doesn't matter. You just need a light color to let, the, let, your, uh, let your next layer pop out. So I laid down the white, and now I'm laying down the yellow. And this is building up layers of intense colors, building that pop. And this is simply a glaze. I'm not doing a wash. A wash and a glaze are just technical words. They're not necessarily... Uh, um, things, but they're more uh, ideas. A wash, you kind of pour on the miniature, sinks into the crevices, the nooks, the crannies, the cracks, brings out that detail. A glaze is more of a thin coat. Think like a uh, um, filter for photography over light when you go get your family pictures, right? You're just kind of tinting the element. So I want a nice yellow for my orange to build from here first. This will give my yeah, this will give my orange a lot of like um, under color to play off of and build up from. It's not a yellow green. It does look a little green on screen, but it is very very bright, intense yellow. Um, like it is, it is sunshine canary yellow. Someone double check and. Put one more coat on my pants. 
and my shirt here on the good doctor. I'm going to ignore the top for painting. I want those a little lighter for some highlights. And you can see because this is the blue is so desaturated that yellow stands out even more, right? So when you put a bright color, a bright saturated color next to a desaturated color, it makes it more intense, right? If this blue was like a very poppy primary blue, like something like this, it, re it, it competes with the yellow and it wants to fight. So we're gonna let that dry before we move to the orange. We're going back to our Thanos. We're going to go the opposite way on him. So I want the blue to be intense, and I want the I want so I want to push back the golds, and I'm going to use a lot of inks here again, but I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to use the same blue. I'm going to use the same amaranth blue, except I'm going to add ink intense blue to it, and this is going to create my first shadow. And instead of adding black or gray. This is going to keep, this is going to darken our blue up, keeping it in the same family, but keeping it very intense. Like, wait till you see this color. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this. Let's start, of course, start right in the leg, right where you can't see it. I'm going to drag that across with my brush. I, I use two brushes to paint with. I'm going to drag that across so it stays very deep in the dark shadows and then gets thinner as I pull it forward with a damp brush. So it's a very intense blue. I'm just going to bring that forward, and as it comes forward, it loses pigment. And creates that depth and that shadow for the miniature. All while adding, because of the ink, it adds that intensity across everything. See, and that's already defining so much. Mr. Dragon, question. I can imagine the color ink one uses to intensify or desaturate a color depends on the model's color scheme. How do you choose which color ink for the desired effect? Um, well, I choose my color scheme. Um, and then it's a little bit of color theory. So desaturators are your grays, whites, um, black will desaturate a color. Um, so that's why I, I, you know, if you're going for something poppy, you're not necessarily going for those colors or you're not going to reach for those colors. You want real intense colors. Like look at your inks like this. This intense blue is real punchy inside the bottle. And then there's also a cyan that you can play with. So by having that dark, dark, intense blue, right? It's automatically going to create shadow while maintaining so much of the uh, intensity of color. So I'm going to drag this across. I don't want it to pull. I want to drag it. I want it to dissipate as I go right across that. And just look at the intense color you get. Right? That's, that's what I like. I like real intense colors on my miniatures. Which, of course, for Marvel Crisis Protocol works really, really good. You know, you got these bright, bigger than life comic book characters. But this can be done on any type of miniature you're painting. I'm not painting the back, but I want to bring that shadow around to the front for you on that arm. See, and I just keep it off that top there. 
And I just get this nice, intense Thanos. And we're even going to take just another step. We're going to make this even more intense as we go. And you would do the same over here, bringing this around. I'm at a weird angle, sorry. I'm not going for perfect today. I'm just going for the idea. And as this dries, we're going to add another color into those shadows to make them even more intense. Just deepen up that chest area with that really awesome blue. Doesn't matter if I get his face a little messy. I'll be back for that. I got pretty intense blue on there. And now to make it even more intense, we're going to do the opposite of what we did with our Doctor Strange. We're going to push the armor down. We're going to we're going to remove some of the vibrancy, but we're going to try to keep it very in, uh, you know, we're going to keep it intense. We're going to keep it poppy, but we're going to also watch what we do here. I'm going to go back to some blood fest crimson. I'm going to open the blood fest crimson. It's a real red. So when I paint golds, I like a lot of red in my golds. I'm gonna to go to some Arbuckles Brown. I'm gonna mix these two together. So I'm gonna deepen the, I wanna deepen and enrich in the armor while also making, help push the, the blue forward. I'm going to use some more of that chestnut because I really love that chestnut. I'm going to add some of that in there. That might have been a little too much. Sorry, I got a wet palette. I'm all about making a mess. So I want to paint some of this on here. So this is really kind of, it's red, but it's very flat. And that's what I want. Because what I want is I want to start toning this down. I want to tone down that gold. I want to bring some of that intensity out. What I like to do when I paint my metals is when you uh, start painting metals and thinking about metals, Metals lose their metallicity in the shadows. So we're going we're gonna to do that. We're going to start removing some of the metallicity, some of that shine, right? Which is going to push that gold down. Because right now the gold's kind of overpowering the blue. But I want my blue to be the focused. Well, this is kind of a wash. Just getting it all over. Letting it sink into the crevices, the nooks, the crannies, all those sweet details that we all love so much. Normally, I would when I'm painting, I paint um, from the inside out. So what I would do here is probably not paint the gold. I'd finish up all the blue. I'd do the face and then I do the gold. And then that way I can keep control of my mess because I'm messy, but that's okay. For you guys, I'll break my rules. I also tend to flip measures upside down when I'm painting, but I can't do that. So there I got a little too much. I'm gonna use that second brush. I'm just gonna clean that up just like that. 
Now it's not so messy. Something like that. So you can see I'm starting to push that down. I'm starting to push those that metal down. And then that lets that blue read more. And we're just going to keep working that. We're just going to keep going on this. We're going to let that dry. We're going to go back to our strange. Agent Orange, look at the moon boots. I agree. I love his moon boots. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to that orange mix of, of paint we did or ink we did. It was a little blue or blue. A little orange, a little yellow, a little red, a little yellow. We're going to glaze that over top. I guess more of a wash. I want to get down necrosis. And you can see a little, I want, I want some of that yellow to shine through, right? And I want it to be imperfect because what I can do later is go back and sort of, uh, re-grab those imperfections with some yellow paint and I can make it more mystical and magical and um, having those imperfections and then reinforcing them later gives it more life, energy, um, and visual interest. It gives you a starting place to add some of those cool, I'm sure you've seen paint jobs where they got like little swirls or little additions, little highlights. That's what you can do by painting in perfectly is kind of like build that in. We can see that this orange is very intense. It's made even more intense because that first the white undercoat and then the yellow undercoat. I didn't go straight to I didn't go straight to my orange. You know, I built up Like I said, imperfect is fine. Maybe that's what we'll talk about today as this dries up. We'll go back to this and I'll show you how to pick up those imperfections and use them to your advantage. Right around the edge. Don't forget behind him. So far, I've only used ink tints red, ink tints yellow to make an orange. I used the ink tints yellow directly over the rings. I used a mix of um, amaranth blue and where'd it go? Looking for it. Uh oh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Arbuckle's brown and a little touch of the ends mouth blue to make the blue on Doctor Strange. That's all I've used on Doctor Strange. And then on Thanos, it was the same amaranth blue, ink tints blue. So first this, and then a mix of these two. And then the gold was dwarven gold. Um, and then the Arbuckles and um, Bloodfest. Whoever's putting the names on the screen, thank you. All right, so I want to I want to keep the opposite of yellow is purple, and it's going to make my uh, colors pop more. Like I said, I want the yellow to pop on this. I want the blue to pop on this. So I got the yellow 
it's nice and poppy but I need to shade that blue so honestly what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blood fest and um, uh, our buckles I already mixed together I'm going to keep the ink out of it because I want this very desaturated I want to mix it into that ends mouth and I'm going to make a dark purple I want this nice and desaturated. That's why I'm using the ends mouth. It's not a super poppy color. It's nice and creamy and good, but it's it's not it's not super poppy. So I'm going to use this to shade. And I'm just going to put some real quick shadow. I'm going to make this leg more shadowy than the other leg because it's kind of pushed back and under his tabard. Right, and that little bit of purple in there provides that contrast to the yellow. Right? Contrast is, contrast helps you have intensity, helps you add that pop that we're talking about going for here. And that purple yellow contrast is always super good to work with. Once again, I'm not going for like perfect blends here. I'm just having fun. Just having a good time with my Doctor Strange. I'm just kind of bringing that shadow over the top, getting it in the crevices of those, those nice little sculpted wrinkles. Pulling it out just a little bit. Nothing fancy. Just need to tone it all down for our pop. And when you add all the colors to this, that's gonna keep keep that yellow my, my focus. And that's what I really want out of this piece. I really want that yellow to be that focus. I want that nice, desaturated Dr. Strange. Of course, the cape is probably going to be pretty red, but I really want, or once I add the blue to it and the cape, because blue is a great shadow color for red, but that I, want that I want that ring to be real poppy. So the inks are helping with that. My color choices on the miniature are helping with that and all that stuff. Back to Thanos. Boop. Oh, I took all the poster tack with me. I need some of that for Thanos. One second, I need a drink. All right. Let's keep with the blue. I'm going to go, once again, I'm going to put purple in there. I'm going to use the exact same mix of the Arbuckles and Bloodfest. Except for this time, I'm going to put our Ink Tints mix in there. So these are all the same colors, just in different orientations. So this is going to be a very intense purple, almost a violet. Uh oh, and it looks like there was something on my palette. So that mix kind of got destroyed. I'm going to turn my palette around. I'm going to try that mix one more time, one more time. 
remember when you're mixing blue, blue is a very intense pigment. It really tries to override everything. It's kind of a bully um, in that sense. So be very sparing with the blue. Um, it doesn't take a lot of blue, especially these blue inks. If you pick up some blue inks, um, they're very powerful colors, very high pigment. Let's see what we got here. So this is a pretty dark, but still highly potent purple. And once again, I'm just going to reinforce those shadows except for I'm just going to keep them way back. I'm not going to overdo it this time. I'm not going to stretch it all the way out over every every element like I did before. But that little bit of purple helps me define my golds more. Then the golds help define the blue. So it's all working together harmoniously. And of course, deeper in the shadow, the more I want. Like, this is what this looks like. There you go. My brush was a little wet. So by adding that little bit of purple, it intensifies that blue, and I, but it's still very vivid. It's got a lot of pigment in there. It's got a lot of punch. And just still just keeping the colors very intense, but I just darkened it. But I'm not losing the saturation. And that's what we're really kind of talking about here. It's getting darker colors, but maintaining the saturation. You can see how that's just that little bit of purple. I also like to, we're going to put a little magenta in here maybe. I did it on my, uh, my personal videos and it looked really, really sharp and just adds another layer. It makes the blue stand out even more. So we might play with that. A little blue on this gold. Clean that up, no big. Got to find that bicep. Now, that blue is super intense, and I've darkened it, but maintained all my highlights. So that's, that's my goal. That is my goal. So I want some Arbuckles Brown, going back straight up Arbuckles Brown. And now I want like a really rich brown and no ink. I want a pretty opaque color. And I want to darken up my golds one more time to remove that metalosity from the shadows. I want the shadows to be pushed back. I want to remove all the luster and the deepest shadows of the gold. That's going to make the gold pop on the highlights. I'm going to start making decisions as I go where I want stuff to be, where my focus is. Like I said, metal loses its metal loses its uh, reflectiveness in the shadow, so that's my goal. I want to I want to remove that reflectiveness.
just like that. And the edge here of his torso armor. Just like that. See, and that's just pushing that gold down and just removing that reflectiveness really lets it live. Right up in that collar, just fill that all in. You want to frame that face. You want it to look really sharp. I can just bring the shadow forward, just pull it, just like that. Just remove the reflectiveness from that lower part. Same here. We're just removing that luster, but we're keeping that intensity. They're working together in har harmony now, my blue and my gold. And I'd usually do the shadows brighter than the front, but I imagine him stepping out of the shadows. So I'm being dramatic now. So I'm going to remove, remove the highlights from the top. Bring that shot, bring that, bring the highlight forward. Frames him up. And just make decisions where you want. There's no wrong. You're having fun. You're having fun painting, then you're doing it right. I'm just going to hit that shadow one more time. I'm, that way, I'm really removing the reflectiveness now. Really getting rid of that metallosity in the shadows to increase the overall metallosity. That's the, that's the philosophy there. So like I kind of did the whole panel there, but now I'm just gonna like push it right into those crevices. To soften that. I imagine this being a gem. So I'm just gonna paint right around there so we get that dark ring. And then we can paint that gem some other color we want. Mollusk and Monsters, so you're basically applying 2D rules to 3D art. Absolutely, that is absolutely correct. Um, you're, you're taking the philosophy of like, um, so there's two types of way to paint uh, metals, right? We, we see this all the time. Um, you have the true metallic metal and the um, non-metallic metal. Non-metallic metal is the opaque paints built up and kind of uh, creating an illusion of metallosity. Um, you see this in 2D art, you see this in classical art all the time. I'm gonna move this just so you have something interesting to look at. Um, so you're, you're using that same philosophy as like 2D art, like the classical painters, um, to create the illusion of metal. Um, so true metallic metal can be everything from just laying down a layer of silver and putting a black wash over top of it um, and then dry brushing it, a bright silver, and you're like, true metallic metal. This is more of, I'm applying all the rules of non-metallic metal in a true metallic sense, right? 
So I'm pushing those shadows down with those opaque paints. I'm going as dark as I possibly can. I want to get, you can even go almost down to black when you're doing silver, right? Um, and then you're bringing it up. I would go way up high on this. If I was finishing up this Thanos, which I might just do, because man, this guy looks great. Um, I might just take it home and finish it this weekend. Um, I would bring it almost up to bright silver on the edges. And I mean, I'm talking like just the edges. I'm just like doing the, the top of the head and maybe like the edges of the shoulders, but not so much the boots. Definitely the gauntlet. That's going to be the most amazing part. Um, but it's the same philosophy. And then the same thing is working on these blue parts, right? It's, it's 2D philosophy applied 3D. I'm pushing it down, I'm, 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 but I'm keeping my intensity and I'm bringing those volumes, you know, the pectoral areas, the shoulders, top of the biceps, I'm bringing those forward to the viewer and trying to keep it very interesting for you, the viewer, to look at. Um, where are we at here? Let's add a little magenta. I talked about adding magenta to the blue. I really like adding magenta to the blue. Um, that's crimson, that's not magenta. Crimson will be fine. We'll put a little touch of blue in there. Do blues well work well over silver? Absolutely. I love starting a lot of my silvers um, with, um, this is gonna be intense crimson with a little touch of blue to make a good magenta. I love blues built into my uh, silvers. So I got a little dark magenta and just very thinly, very thinly putting in some magenta into this purple blue mix. It just adds a touch of warmth and a touch of life and visual interest. And by hiding like some interesting colors, um, I got a little bad spot there. I'm just gonna scrub it away. By adding like interesting colors into your palette here and there, you can create a lot of visual interest for, your, um, for the viewer. Right. I'm barely putting any red in this magenta, just or just a little bit, just to add a little hint visually, adds more pop, adds more, adds just so much more to it. And also I can take that same color and thin it down. Watch this. That's a little too thin, but I'll make it work somehow because that's what we do. Let's go back to our Doctor Strange. So we talked about accentuating uh, any of the little areas that, you know, were imperfect. So what I would do here is I'd reinforce my oranges where I want. So maybe right here where these two rings come together reinforce that. I'm just pulling a little orange ink and a little uh, Tiamat orange together and just sort of reinforcing a couple areas, darkening this, darkening that. Right where the rings come together, it, it creates that nice division line. But then what I want is maybe I want to take a little uh, white. I got some sort of off-white on my palette. I don't know what it's from. 
it's left over from another project. And I'm going to put some yellow. And I can do the edges. Right? And by adding yellow ink to white, I get this really intense. So white is a desaturator, but the ink helps overcome that. Like it doesn't completely remove the desaturation properties, but it does help. Right? And I can, so like say I got this little imperfectness here. I can like maybe use that to my advantage. I can like. So a little line of orange, where the orange and the yellow come together by putting a little bit of this bright white in here, right? Don't mess up though. Or do you mess up? I mess up all the time. It's all right. You just fix it. It's okay. All right, I just I like finding those little weird imperfect spots and just just making them visually interesting to me, like just letting them be part of the the paint job. I'll just keep doing this wherever I want, just popping it out. And that's just making it more intense, right? Just really bringing up the intensity of the magic and the spell effect there, right? Especially if you put it, the bright white yellow right next to this, like orange, the darker orange, just makes it look more intense, more pop. That imperfect line of the wash. Just reinforce it. Use it to your advantage. Now I'm starting to get a really nice, intense sigil for our Doctor Strange. Let's highlight our blue. Maybe I'll get it off here. Maybe. Cormatac, uh, thanks for showing by example that extreme precision is not necessary to apply good techniques and make great looking miniature. You know what? Thanks for noticing that. Like, I, I can be very precise when I need to be, but I, the wash lines are fine, Eki Page. The wash lines are fine. That's why I was showing, like, you can use the wash lines to your advantage sometimes. It's not necessarily, like, a, across everything. But like, um, I'm going. I'm answering both of y'all's questions and compliments at the same time. Um, but like, even if you had wash lines uh, on our Thanos here, I can use those to my advantage, and we're going to explain that right now. So I'm going to go back to my Amrith Blue. I like to use my imp imperfections to my advantage. I guess is what I'm saying. So I don't necessarily want to go full blown white to make a highlight. Um, I'm going to I'm going to use some white. I'm going to mix a light blue and then I'm going to add that light blue 
back into another blue. So what that does is it, um, it gives me a higher pigment and less desaturated mixer. Does that make sense? So I'm just mixing straight in white. I'm mixing a new color that has more intensity than pure white. So put a little drop of ink in there just to up the intensity. Then I will add that to blue. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing a whole bunch of bringing up my white with color and then adding that into my base color to make my highlight to maintain a lot of pop. Yeah, use all, use all these little imperfections and stuff to your advantage. Like, it's like there's a little bit of a wash line right there. Okay. Cover it up with a highlight. Oh, and a little bit brighter. Just like this, sometimes the highlight is just a nice little dot. It doesn't have to be perfect blend or anything crazy. Let's just do a couple of dots. Let's just do some dots. What the heck? Everybody likes dots. So this is not pure white. This is that. Oh, there's some ink on my... Little dots, not pure white. It's got some blue in there. The scale seventy five is a gel based uh, paint, and like it's nice and creamy. So you can see how it's working on my brush. Just kind of do whatever you want. I'm just using the tip of my brush just to bring in some highlights. Just to keep that nice and intense. That's also add texture. Texture is good. Texture is visually interesting. Texture can also provide contrast. It's one of the, the many types of contrast. Another thing I like to do is maybe pick not as not a pure bright white. Let's go in this deep shadow. Let's just put a couple of little highlights down in there. By having that little bit of blue in there, I'm just keeping that blue, that overall blue nice and intense, right? Lots of intensity, lots of color, vibrancy, saturation. That's what we're talking about today. Right, just bringing it out.
not necessarily a wrong way to apply this and you can do it however you want you choose your you choose your adventure you choose your path let's bring up that edge line of that scene And that's just letting that blue read stronger and stronger each time. Uh, Scarlet Terror may be real new question, but what do you use to dilute? Uh, typically, I just use uh, a little water. It says a little water. All right, let's highlight our gold. Let's open our gold. And let's go ahead and start getting our questions in. Like, let's get our final questions in. We're about done here with what I had planned. So let me hear your questions about your saturation and pop and your uh, stuff. Sorry, I'm opening my paint. This is what had taken me 10 years to get to this point. This took me, uh, took me a lot of years. Been doing this for a long time. But it was all about asking questions and, uh, you know, really listening to people. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to highlight this with a very intense. I'm going to try not to get it on my blue, but I fail. Very intense. This is elven gold. And by using a very high, sharp gold and having those dark, dark shadows, I'm going to get a more metallic effect, right? This isn't perfect. That's okay. Now I was a little thick, so I'm just going to use my second brush and clean it up. No big deal. If you clean up this top edge, that might be at a funny angle for the camera, sorry. See how much that metal pops now? That highlight gets to pop more because of how dark my shadow is. This is all metallic. Everything is everything is metallic. Uh, tabletop uh, bell hop. Diluting scale color and then pulling the paint through with a separate freshly. Uh, this is an undiluted. This is straight paint. That's just pure paint right out of the pot. And then I use a second damp brush to stretch it out over top. Stretch it out where I want it. It's a technique called two brush blending. And uh, I'll, if you, uh, I'll probably teach, teach class on it real soon. I'm 
I'm not doing the best version of it. Really, you don't want to ever dip the brush down into the uh, paint. You want to just grab the edge, stretch it out. So you can see, like I said, the dark shadows on the armor help make this more poppy, more vibrant, more visually interesting. I think all paint brands have their pros and their cons, so it's all about finding what works for you. Not every, uh, like they each, like all paint brands can do different things differently. So it all depends on your application and your, uh, what you're going for. Whoops. Now, of course, to make this metal pop even more, I would dull cut this and then I'd mix silver in with my gold and I would do those final highlights we talked about earlier. And that's going to really make my gold pop. That really helps all your metals pop. Um, hitting it with that dull coat, coming in and making it, adding some silver to the gold or just a really high silver to your silver just really allows it to read and pop kind of focusing on that chest armor because I think it's so cool and I know I don't have a lot of time left so uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. I was told when I use water the edges would be more pigmented than the center any of I um, you're thinning it too much um, I don't I've um, I know some of you may not know me. Um, my name is Dallas. Hello. I'm with Atomic Mass Games. We make Marble Crisis Protocol. And I do studio painting and teach classes. I've been, been doing it for a long time. Um, so I'm not saying you should listen to me at all. But that's just my experience. I've always just used water. So it's all about learning the control, learning the, you know, what's what's best for what you're painting. So that's really popping. Mr. Dragon says maybe a blue or even black, depending on the miniature. Uh, what what is that? Quite what is that in response to? Uh, while I'm waiting for Mr. Dragon, Angelway38, do you research your color schemes or wing it? Oh boy. Oh boy. Josh, um, I'm a mix. I'm a big proponent of um, research and uh, references. I love references, but many times I will totally just wing it and just make it up. Um, <laughs> I do a lot of winging it. Um, it depends. If it's for me, it's a winging it. If it's for a studio, if I'm studio painting, it's definitely um, much more uh, research and uh, reference based. Um, original question was, so which colors will you over, use over silver to reduce the metallicity? Um, depends on the silvers. Um, if you want something corroded and awful, you know, you're going to add greens, uh, maybe some purples. Um, I like using blues. Um, you can use blacks, you can use grays. Um, you could use magentas depending on if maybe you're doing like a fantasy armor. Um, so I could see doing um, some magenta and orange to push down the silver and make it more like there's some sort of mystical effect. So it's really, once again, it's that whole, um, It's at, it's at what are you going for? What is the end result, right? Someone asked how to highlight over top of silver. Um, it's kind of like white. You don't, like if you're painting white, don't start with white. 
start with an off white. So like maybe this is your base tone, right? Uh, Miskatonic gray. And you shade down and you leave pure white for that real intense, uh, sharp highlight. It makes it look more white, right? Um, Cause like no element in the world is just pure white. So like if you look at nature, um, like look at a white car, there's almost no pure white on it. It's just the edges, it's the sharp highlights. So by going down, by starting at a mid-tone, you go up to light. It's the same, same, same way with silver, right? Um, you start with a mid-silver, and then you dull it down with your metallosity technique, you know, by making it more opaque, and then you just bring it up with a real sharp bang, just bang, real bright silver. So like in scale 75, right out in front of me here, Those are, that's like your triad, right? You base here, highlight here, and then final boom. Just that bang. That makes it pop. Makes it intense. All right, so I think that's our Thanos done. Um, the blue's really popping. The gold is popping, but the gold is helping my blue stay strong. Um, and everything is like real intense. My Doctor Strange is the same way, like that orange ring is really reading. Um, and so that's kind of like how we make it uh, make it pop. We still have a few minutes. All right. What can I do in 10 minutes? Josh. They're demanding the final 10 minutes. I'm gonna. I have an Ultron. What can we do with the Ultron? I can make. I can make his. I can make him glow. Let's do some glow. Everybody wants the final ten minutes, Josh. So we're talking about inks. We're talking about pop, and nothing pops more than a cool glow. So all my glows start with white. Maybe even an off-white, just something bright. I'm going to paint this into the crevices I want to glow. I got to hurry. Josh is ready for lunch. I'm ready for lunch. Let's hope this white dries quick. Clean that up. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of got on some stuff, so. So you can't really see that. Do you have any advice regarding the sculpting itself? Like what assists with the painting? That's a great question. Uh, what, is, what do I look for as a painter? I look for like really nice little details, uh, sharp edges. Um, and me personally, I like big flat areas as a painter i'm gonna let this dry a minute and take a drink while i'm answering a question i like big flat areas when i'm painting like thanos right i don't i like these you know the surface of the thigh and the arm and the torso is it's got nice detail but it's it's still pretty flat it's not covered in gribbles it's not cluttered it's just this nice smooth area where I can really stretch my paints and get a cool blend. I can add stuff to it. I could add, de I could add details. So that's what I really look for. That's what I, I enjoy painting. So 
this is going to be the same thing as like uh, say um, our Doctor Strange. I got that white built in. I'm going to take some yellow. I'm just using the tip of the brush. Remember the brush and the paint want to do a job. They want to do a good job for you even. So you got to let them, you know. No need in forcing them. And if you get a little mistake, you clean it up. yellow what makes your life easier when you're painting uh, music so I'm gonna get some orange ink I need a blow dryer that's what makes my life easier blow dryers when I go on social media and somebody says waiting for the paint to dry I'm like why get a blow dryer Five minutes, I just got the warning. I got five minutes. I wanna lay in some orange. Very, very little on my brush. You can see I'm testing it out on my finger there. Just a little orange. Just add some warmth. I already did it on the eyes yesterday. And then as that's drying, I'm gonna grab some red. Mix it in with a little bit of orange make it really dark like that if I keep this very thin just add a little bit of depth a little using that second brush to keep control of it you want the center of your glows to be hot so you want the centers to be white so I'm going to start up here on this just try to focus it at the top corner there of the chevron and right in the middle it kind of shows that this area is the hot glowy area there we go there you go all right so unfortunately, my time is up. I would sit and paint all day, but that's not what I get to do. Kick me back over, Josh, and I'll say goodbye. It's on you. Oh, it's on me? Oh, hello. <laughs> I can't tell. So hopefully that, um, hopefully that was uh, informative and uh, gave you some ideas and some confidence to go ahead and try it yourself. Remember, you're trying to keep the colors bright and poppy and um, get in there and just get some intensity on those, uh, on those miniatures. So 
Thanks for joining in, and um, until next time, we'll see you later, and enjoy Gen Con 2020 online. Be safe. Bye.